we have seen what are the possible strings the strings could be 0 0 1 1 or the string prefix and suffix could be anything but definitely we should have 0 0 follow or 1 1 so we have started with the start state on the start state with input symbol 1 we have moved on to the next state that is q1 again from q1 we are transitioning on the next input symbol that is 1 to the next state that is q2 so here the constraint of exactly two ones is met the constraint of exactly two ones is met so we are following this path and two ones are met and then there is also a possibility of having two zeros so once again we are start we are following another path okay so in this path again we will be transitioning on zero to the next state that is q3 and once again we will be transitioning to the final state on input symbol zero so here this is one one exactly two ones and here i have exactly two zeros and we reached on to the final state so now the strings go either zero zero or one one is accepted now and moreover this is like a dfa and then the prefix and suffix could be anything so here there is no constraint that only these only 00, zero or 11 one one should be accepted but the st all strings with either two consecutive zeros or two consecutive ones so anywhere it should have two consecutive zeros or two consecutive ones so what 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 extra thing we can do is at q0 we can add a self loop with the input labels 0 1 so a self loop always indicates zero or more occurrences so i can take any number of occurrences of zero or any number of occurrences of one but i am not sure that definitely i will be taking them in a cons taking them consecutively so only this condition of consecutive we are making sure and similarly at q2 also there can be any prefix also right so at q2 also we are taking a self loop with input labels 0 1 so so far we have seen nfa without epsilon moves so whenever you are seeing nfa we have discussed that that is nfa without epsilon moves so whenever you are seeing phi fa the meaning is deterministic finite automation similarly whenever you are seeing nfa it is nfa without epsilon moves so now let us proceed on to nfa with epsilon moves and one more thing i have told you yesterday is that whatever automation we have designed that nfa is also satisfying the requirement of a dfa okay so why that is happening what is the necessity of an nfa being represented like a dfa so that all will be clear here when we go with this nfa with epsilon moves so okay so this non-deterministic finite automation with epsilon moves is a further generalization to nfa so we have seen this classification also right nfa without epsilon moves the second category is nfa with epsilon moves so when we need this epsilon moves whenever the automation doesn't know the possible input okay so we are not sure of what is the possible input that we may take in that case we will take epsilon as a possible input why we should take epsilon as a possible input is some transition should happen so that means without knowing anything we should be able to move from one state to another state in dfa or nfa without epsilon this is not possible okay so whenever you want to move from the transitions without consuming an input symbol are called as epsilon transitions so here there is no input symbol epsilon meaning empty string there is no input at all but still i want to move from one state to another state why i should go what is the reason for going so is just see that we are modeling a particular system and we are not clear what is the current state and i should proceed with which particular input i have a dilemma so should i go with a q or should i go with a q dash 
so the first input or the second input so initially while designing we will not be very clear we will be starting with an abstract model so with only few ideas we will start right so in that case we are not sure of the input but i want to see that okay somehow i am reaching to the final my aim is first i'll design abstractly some model and then i will fine tune that again so in that case we will go with this epsilon transition we can add an epsilon transition between these two states thus putting the automation in both states simultaneously so that means if i am moving from q1 to q2 with the help of epsilon the automation can be treated as it is in the state q1 as well as it is in the state of q2 so here in brief what you should understand is what is meant by an epsilon transition is a transition without any input symbol when you are not sure of the input you can go with an epsilon transition without any input whenever you want to move from one particular state to another particular state then you can go with this epsilon so uh, once the, uh, this nfa with epsilon moves are constructed you will have some model it is not a perfect model but some abstract model some absolute model you have so later on you will fine tune it how you will fine tune it is first this nfa with epsilon moves we will be converting it into nfa without epsilon so later on we will do some research and we'll try to find out what possible input will come over there in place of epsilon and we will remove epsilon there and we will substitute that input so then this nfa with epsilon moves will become into nfa without epsilon and later on that nfa without epsilon will also once again will be converted to a dfa because constructing a dfa in the initial stage in real time whenever you want to model something it we will will not be very sure with all the requirements and we will not be having all the inputs one by one slowly when the process goes on then only we will have so the convenient model that could be started with is nfa with epsilon moves or nfa without epsilon moves suppose if you are clear about all the inputs then you will go with nfa with epsilon moves and later we will convert that to a dfa suppose if i am not sure about the inputs also so then you can come with nfa with epsilon moves okay instead of stopping the design or instead of stopping the model what we can do is you can proceed with the model you can proceed with the design of a model let me give a real time example for example if you want to design a college automation system a simple example only let us take so you want to automate the college so there what will you do so first thing is suppose you just think you are in a first year you don't know much about the college or suppose if you are in third year also you doesn't exactly you doesn't know internally what is the process that happens so in that case what can you do so you just know that okay in our college these many branches are there so for each branch you can take a state okay or in each branch so these many years are there so these many students are there so the only those requirements you know but you doesn't know exactly how many students have been passed out already or how many are promoted from second year to third year or what is the internal process of uh, uh, for approval of something so all these things we are not sure so in that case you can go for nfa with epsilon transitions so now you are promoting from second year to third year without any input only you are proceeding so that also can be treated as an epsilon transition only so because of the pandemic situation without any exam and without any result you have you are promoted to the next semester so this also we can take as an epsilon transition so now let us see the formal definition of and if you are with epsilon is my screen visible ma is my screen visible yes ma'am 
So NFA with epsilon is represented by phi tuple as usual Q sig uh, sigma dou. So the dou is represented here as delta dou. Don't worry with the symbols. In some books, they will use this notation also. And Q naught and F the set of final states. So the only difference that comes here is in terms of a transition function. So far, whatever we have discussed in, in NFA with, without epsilon, what we discussed is Q cross sigma tends to power set of Q. So that is, this is the definition we have used. But now, to the input alphabet, you are also adding the epsilon. Along with the input alphabet, epsilon also will be added as an extra input alphabet. That is the difference we will be observing. You will be clear when we see the examples. The same definition what we have discussed for NFA without epsilon. Capital Q is the set of states. And then sigma is the input alphabet. Do is the transition function. But here the transition function is changing. Q cross sigma union epsilon we are considering. So this is transitioning to power set of Q. And Q naught is taken as an initial state. It belongs to the set of states Q and F is taken as a set of final states, which is a proper subset of the set of states that is Q. So let us see one example how our NFA with epsilon transition will look like is. So here you can see Q0 is the start state. Q0 on A, we are moving on to Q1. Q1 on epsilon, we are moving on to Q2. We made this Q2 as a final state and we have given a self loop at B. So here actually you can read the question once. Construct an NFA which accepts A followed by any number of Bs. A followed by any number of Bs can be taken. So here in that case any number. Suppose if here if I give B. A followed by any number of Bs. There should be a single A followed by any number of Bs should be there. So that means immediately I should get a self loop. Okay, so here instead of giving this epsilon and taking one more state, here itself I can give a self transition for B. Any number of Bs are accepted. But also there is a possibility that you can design like this also. Q0 to Q1, you are taking the input A. You want, you want to make use of three states. So for that case, what we did is Q1 to Q2 actually doesn't need any input. So we made it as epsilon. On Q2, we have given a self loop with P. And in the transition table, while writing the transition table also, there are there is an introduction of the symbol phi. Phi you can see here. Q0 on A, we are moving to Q1. Q0 on B. There is no transition. So you can mark it as a blank or you can also mark it as empty. So here the input epsilon is added to the input alphabet. So far in our previous examples, we have the transition table up to here only. So the only the input alphabet is taken A comma B. But now since it is an NFA with epsilon transition, we will also add epsilon to the existing set of input symbols. So for this epsilon also, we are noting down all the transitions. Q0 on epsilon, we have no transition like that. So we are marking it as empty. You can also give a blank here. Q1 on A, no transition, empty. Q1 on B also, no transition, empty. Q1 on epsilon, yes, there is a transition. Q1 on epsilon, it is moving on to Q2. And then Q2. So Q2 on A, no transition. Q2 on B, there is a transition. It is moving to Q2 itself. And Q2 on epsilon, no transition. So we are marking it as empty only. And Q2 is our final state. 
I am showing you all possible representations. One one book follows one one notation per flag. So we, you should know any of the way. In exam, if you see the symbol phi, you need not be confused. So this is in place of this. Previously, we were marking with just a hyphen. And for the last state Q2 also, we have seen two representations, right? Either you can go with this circle or a star mark also is allowed, I told you yesterday. So either a star or a circle can be treated as a final state. So now, the operations that we can perform on this epsilon is, we will be calculating the epsilon closure. Okay. So why we need to calculate this epsilon closure, we will be seeing in further classes. But let us see how to calculate this epsilon closure. Epsilon closure of a state is defined as a set of all vertices P such that there is a path from Q to P labeled epsilon. So whenever you are seeing a path from one vertex P to some other vertices with an input label epsilon, all those states we will be taking as epsilon closure of that particular state. So let us see one example. We are calculating epsilon closure of Q0. So whenever you are calculating like this, always you will also add the self state. So here I have given including itself also you should take. Since I am calculating the epsilon closure of Q0, we will be taking Q. We will be taking Q0 into account and also on epsilon. Q0 on epsilon, it can move on to Q1. Q1 on epsilon, it can go to Q2. And on epsilon, it can also move to Q3. So three states it can reach. Q0 can reach to three states on input symbol epsilon. So all the three states we are adding. Q1 we have added. Q2 we have added. Q3 we have added. Similarly, epsilon closure of Q1 we are calculating. Okay. So here, while calculating epsilon closure of Q1, we will see all inputs with epsilon symbol. And the states that it could reach is Q2 and Q3. We should add the state Q1 also. So epsilon closure of Q1 is Q1, Q2, Q3. And similarly, epsilon closure of Q2. Epsilon closure of Q2 is the state itself we should consider. So Q2 we have added on epsilon it can move on to q3 so q3 also we are adding similarly epsilon closure of q3 so q3 on epsilon it doesn't have any transition but we will include that state right so only q3 is there only q3 is added for the epsilon closure of q3 Calculation of epsilon closure is very easy. We will, you will always add the state for which you are calculating the epsilon closure and the states which are reachable from that particular state with an input epsilon. Is it clear? Is it clear? getting any response. Isma, is it clear? Clear. Only Priyanka is responding clear. What about the rest of the people? Shall I repeat? Out of 59, only 2-3 are responding. What happened to remaining people? So, this indicates I should repeat them. Okay, fine. Ma'am, uh, Q3 is not having further any epsilon transition, no ma'am. Then why is the need for calculating closure further? 
we will calculate epsilon closure for all the states in the automation the need we will be understanding when why we will be calculating this epsilon closure is to convert nfa with epsilon to nfa without epsilon and further to dfa so for that conversion i need all the states when we use it you will be clear but you should calculate for all the states I repeat the process of epsilon closure once again whenever you are calculating epsilon closure always you should include the state itself here we are calculating epsilon closure of q not so we are taking the state q not we are adding q not and q not on epsilon it can go to q1 it can go to q2 it can go to q3 so all the three states we are adding including the state q0 q0 q1 q2 q3 and again we are calculating the epsilon closure of q1 so you should definitely add the state q1 and then the paths with epsilon moves from q0 to some other states from q1 i have a path to q2 and we also have a path to q3 so we will add both q2 q3 next epsilon closure of q2 so i should add the state q2 here we have added q2 and also on epsilon we can move to q3 so we are adding here q3 next when we are calculating for epsilon closure of q3 you should add the state q3 i have added we have added here but there is no epsilon transition here so we are not taking any further we have only the state itself included into epsilon closure epsilon closure is nothing but set of all vertices set of all vertices such that there is a path from q2 p labeled epsilon so from one vertex to another vertex i should have a path labeled as epsilon so all those set of states can be taken as epsilon closure of a particular state so now let us see one one problem construct an nfa with epsilon moves to accept a language consisting of any number of a's followed by any number of b's followed by any number of c's whenever you are constructing either an nfa or nfa with epsilon moves the design is very much similar to dfa so only i have stressed upon dfa so much and i have given you the assignment so if you are clear with dfa you will be very much a uh, confident with nfa and nfa with epsilon moves so see here accept a language which consists of any number of a's followed by any number of b's followed by any number of c's any number of a's means what shall i do how shall we proceed what is the minimum number of a's that i should take please unmute yourself and talk zero zero so zero yeah minimum number is zero so that means any number means zero or more number of a's can be taken similarly any number of b's also the same thing zero or more number of states more number of b's any number of c's also the same thing zero or more number of c's so how can we design this so let us start with our start state so that is q not so and here any number of is whenever we are saying zero or more always we go with the self loop right so i have taken a self loop okay so any number of is so the input label is a one thing is over any number of is is over 
followed by any number of b should be there so how shall i proceed i forgot to give a starting arrow here you just mark it now so here in the beginning we should have a starting arrow stating that q not is the start state yes followed by any number of b's suppose here if i take one input path and if i give a b that indicates definitely there should be one b right but the constraint is any number of zeros so what shall i give here so with epsilon transition to q1 and self loop with b on q1 yes very good so here we will be specifying an epsilon transition so actually there is no need of any input here without any input i should be able to go for any number of these so here we are giving an epsilon transition and then moving on to the next state that is q1 and here we will give a self loop with input alphabet b so here we have satisfied the constraint of any number of a's followed by any number of b's now this any number of b should be followed by any number of c's so once again the same logic is followed can anyone else answer always the same person is answering so instead of him somebody else can answer me q1 on epsilon goes to q2 yes q1 on epsilon transition moves on to the next state q2 and then self loop in q2 any input yes c. any number of c's so we'll have a self loop on q2 with input alphabet c and we will make q2 as a final state okay i forgot to make it a double circle and here i also i have not given the start symbol no? just you make it while posting i'll modify the slides and i'll post right now you just take in your notebooks make a note of a double circle and a start strip so that's it for today's class so can any doubts any doubts till now If you have any doubts, you can ask me.